What you just witnessed was the only indication in the Mean Girls trailer that it was a musical. What follows is a trailer for the movie, filled with iconic lines and random sequences set to Olivia Rodrigo's song, Get Him Back. If you're aware this is based off a Broadway adaptation of the classic film, you'll probably understand that this will be a musical based on the initial small amount of singing in the trailer and the clear allusions to dance sequences. But for a general audience who is unaware of the Broadway production, it's understandable to have no idea that this is a musical. I mean, to be completely honest, there's also a musical note in the A on the poster, so it's obviously a musical. It's not as if the cast and crew have shied away from this being a musical. If you watch any cast interviews, they are constantly being asked about the songs, and the movie being a weird mix of both the Broadway show and the original. I'd argue that the people consuming this content, however, will already be aware of the fact that this is a musical, with a small portion just watching to see what unhinged thing Renny Rapp will say next, and suddenly find out it's a musical. However, a general person will never come across any of this content, and thus remain completely unaware that this is a musical. Is this a problem, or has Hollywood manufactured it this way? Now this problem is not solely contained to Mean Girls. If you've been on the internet recently, you will have noticed a recent phenomenon of films being marketed as traditional narratives, only for audiences to be sitting watching a film, and unbeknownst to them they've sat down to watch a musical. Most of the time the reactions are less than favourable. Wonka had a similar problem, with none of the marketing featuring any indication that there was going to be songs at all. Sure, you could argue that since the previous Wonka movies were also musicals, that it's fair to assume that this one would be too, but I feel like that's a heavy assumption to make given that Timothy Chalamet has never been in a musical, barring his high school videos, and given he is the lead of the movie, people wouldn't necessarily expect him to sing, as much as people would Renny Rapp. Another recent film which struggled with this problem was The Colour Purple, and the marketing followed a similar pattern to that of Mean Girls. Featured in the trailer is a single clip of Fantasia Verano singing, However, the song she sings is also the song played over the trailer. Much like Mean Girls, those who know this is based off a Broadway show will most likely know from this trailer it's a musical, but while it's based off a famous Broadway show, it's already had a previous film which was not a musical, so for general audiences, if they expected this not to be a musical, it's understandable. So why is Hollywood trying to trick everyone into watching musicals? I mean, the answer actually seems very obvious. Multiple studies have came out since people started catching on to this weird phenomenon which is happening, declaring that we are being tricked because people don't want to watch musicals. Deadline reports that studios are not marketing musicals as musicals because test audience focus groups generally hate musicals and the only way to get people into the theatre with one is to trick them. You could make the argument that people are not doing their research on what they're watching and actually it's fairly easy to find out that these were musicals. But with marketing essentially serving as that research, why would someone have to double check a movie was a musical and has no singing? Perhaps expecting audiences to pick up on the nuances of a trailer and figure out it's a musical based on context clues is actually quite a lot to ask, as marketing musicals as just narrative films has been proven to be working well since people are not picking up on them being musicals. I feel like this is too easy of an answer though. As we will get to, multiple movies historically have been falsely advertised as musicals is still being received well by audiences, as of films which were advertised as musicals. The word musical is scary for studios, notes multiple execs. If you spell out the word musical, people have preformed opinions. Musical has a connotation that characters are going to sing every word and audiences can be turned off, says one studio marketer. So apparently it's hate for musicals being used to perpetuate more sneaky marketing. I want to go back a little to the first movie musical. In the 1920s, with the emergence of sound in movies, musical movies were a natural extension of the stage musical. Released in 1927, The Jazz Singer was the first film to have both non-diegetic and diegetic music. It was the first movie musical, and a movie which certainly does not hold up now. It was a hit, however, and in 1928, Warner Brothers followed this up with The Singing Fool. Given the success of these films, cinemas desperately installed new sound equipment and studios hired Broadway composers to write new musicals. The success of the talkies was so huge that within a year all the major studios were exclusively making sound movies. In 1929, a film called The Broadway Melody was released and won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Hollywood released over 100 musicals in 1930 alone, and as a result only 14 in 1931 
as audiences had grown tired of the format of the movie musical. Love for the movie musical began to pick up again when directors like Busby Berkeley brought new life to the genre and movie stars like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers began to star in musicals. In the 1940s, The Freed Unit, a production unit of MGM fronted by Arthur Freed, began to produce some of the most acclaimed musicals, like An American in Paris and Singing in the Rain, by not following the traditional formula of other movie musicals. This success continued, but in the 1960s, the musical movie could no longer be relied on for surefire hits and saw a decline in the production of musicals. Strangely, the critical and financial success of many 1960s musicals indicated otherwise, like West Side Story and Mary Poppins. But despite the success of some musicals, Hollywood also made many films which were considered flops. Going into the 1970s, film audiences were looking for more gritty and realistic films, making the pure entertainment and musicality of the classic era Hollywood musicals look old-fashioned. Some notable movies were very successful, like Grease, but much like the trend from the 1960s, however, a lot of movies were made which were not successful. The 1980s and 1990s saw a partial revival of the genre given the success of musicals on Broadway and the West End, with some notable examples being Little Shop of Horrors and Annie. However, the real resurgence of the musical during this time was from the Disney Renaissance period, with many of their movie musicals doing good. This brings us to modern day, and honestly, the story has kind of stayed the same. Musicals have dipped in and out of popularity in the 21st century. Many musicals are able to be pointed to as examples of the success of the genre and others which would indicate that the genre is failing. IMDb data shows that the number of movie musicals produced yearly has been in sharp decline since the 1940s. So it's clear at least over time the public opinion of musicals has decreased and the studios producing the films are reflecting this. Or is this really the case? Mentioned before, the idea of marketing movies as non-musicals is nothing new and given the studios are slowly making less and less of these movies, it's understandable why they'd want to hide the fact a movie was a musical in the hopes of getting more people to watch the movie. In Hollywood, to get a film produced and to market a movie, most films are appealing to the four quadrants. A four quadrant movie is one which appeals to the four major demographics, those being men over 25, men under 25, women over 25 and women under 25. In recent times, the musical has become a woman's genre, the musical has become so entwined with femininity that studios are scared to market movies as musicals for fear of alienating a male audience. Not only is this insulting to male audiences, but I think this speaks about the wider problem the world has with femininity and masculinity. A real example of this which happened not long ago was with Tangled. Disney responded to the underperformance of The Princess and the Frog, which was advertised as an old school Disney musical, by changing the name of Rapunzel to Tangled marketing the film by emphasising the male lead of the film and hiding all allusions to it being a musical, in the hopes of drawing in a male audience. Several execs point to the 2013 Disney animated blockbuster Frozen, which was not marketed as a musical. However, the film became known for its songs after release, and its theatrical run totaled 1.28 billion. Actually, the songs were so beloved that it caused a shift in marketing right after. Following Frozen, La La Land fully released two teasers which were Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone singing songs from the film. Next year, The Greatest Showman made no attempt to hide it was a big musical, and then came West Side Story and In the Heights. It's become easy to oversimplify why musicals haven't worked, box office pro chief analyst Sean Robbins says of the theatrical performance of movie musicals. The sample size that a lot of marketing teams are looking at recently are West Side Story and In the Heights and there was a lot of baggage with those. The baggage referred to is COVID. In the Heights released both in cinemas and day on day on HBO Max and made only $45 million globally, while Steven Spielberg's West Side Story made $76 million. Both were considered flops and coupled with the pre-pandemic release of Cats, which made $75 million in 2019, and Dear Evan Hansen, which made $19 million in 2021, it was the sign of the end of the small rise of the movie musical. Literally all of those movies I just listed, however, I feel like could be completely ignored from the argument. Three of those movies released during the height of Covid and as such are not a sign of audiences want for more movie musicals, and the other movie mentioned was ridiculed. So movie musicals are bad to be marketed as not being so, because of a case study of other movies, and to get as many people to watch a movie as possible, Hollywood is using the most generic campaign possible to appeal to all four quadrants. Something still isn't adding up. When looking at the three examples that did really well, Frozen, La La Land and The Greatest Showman, say what you want about the varying quality of each of these films, but they share something in common. The music is good. 
Sounds utterly ridiculous, but I actually think the problem is just making good movies. If you've been following Margot Robbie as she was doing a push for Barbie to be nominated at the Oscars, you will have probably heard her story about how she had been hoping execs to see Barbie as the major movie it could be. She says, One of the biggest fights was convincing everyone that it could be a four quadrant movie because it had, you know, a budget that necessitated it being a four quadrant movie. And that means getting men to go see it. And everyone was just like, there's just no way. Men are never, ever, young or old, are never going to go see a Barbie movie. And we're like, but men will go see a great movie. If it's great, everyone will go see it. People couldn't get past that. What she's saying doesn't feel like a major revelation, but it kind of is. Studios are so focused on how to get people to go watch a movie instead of actually caring about the movie being made. This idea that creativity is a result of perception leads to movies with no clear vision behind them. And audiences are not dumb. This is felt when watching a movie that is overly produced instead of having creatives behind the movie. So if this idea that musicals are this lesser genre, which modern audiences don't want, and are extremely hard to appeal to a wide audience, no wonder musicals are not bringing in results like they used to if this perception is seeping into the creative process. Okay, seeping in how? Get in, loser. For some reason, what feels like the solution to the modern movie musical is realism. Something inherently at odds with the genre being made. Bring this back to Mean Girls, having now saw the movie myself and consumed a stupid amount of opinions online about the movie, it's clear to say that people didn't enjoy a lot of the music in the film. Now whether or not Mean Girls is a good musical doesn't matter. When you hear the side by side between the musical and the movie, however, it's clear which style of production suits the songs better. Tina Fey said in an interview, Can you tell us a little bit more about some of the new songs? Because I know he said he wanted it to sound like something you hear on Spotify as opposed to a Broadway musical. Yeah, you know, and I, you know, we, he and I, we have two daughters and I, I really feel like what I observe about people growing up in the Spotify generation is that you take your music from everywhere. It's not like you go to the store, you buy the one album of the person you like. So my kids have very eclectic mm -hmm. taste. Yeah. And I thought like, I just want everything to sound like the way whatever this track is meant to be and mm -hmm. fresh. It's evident in the movie that this was just the wrong way to go about things. For some reason, the songs are subdued and made to be naturalistic for the most part, which makes a complete dissonance between the vocals and the visuals. When the visuals are these outlandish creative sequences paired with the most flat singing, it just doesn't work. It's why if you've seen the movie, far and away the best music scene is sexy as the vocal matches the visuals. Studios are scared of leaning into the Broadway style of singing that it ends up hurting the film. The examples of the films I mentioned before, Frozen and The Great Showman, still have people listening to their songs, not because they hid from the showness of their songs, but because they embraced it and actually made a good movie not caring about audience opinion. However, La La Land is slightly different. It leans in when it needs to, but it also has a more naturalistic approach. However, this comes from story first. Mia and Sebastian are singing diegetically in the more subtle moments and it works. What doesn't work is when you have a more natural style of singing paired with big musical numbers and people bursting into song, as it contradicts the realism. Look no further than The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, while not a musical and yet alluding to it in its title, when Lucy Gray sings for the first time in that movie, it's jarring. In a world of realism, belting out into song just feels unnatural. It's this crave for realism which is the problem. Realism has been viewed as the answer to appease audiences, but I think in the process it's alienating people. Studios are banking on people who are fans of musicals, which are IPs, to come just on the announcement of a new musical movie, and dialing back the Broadway in hopes of not upsetting a viewer who was unaware. When asked did you intentionally avoid advertising the movie as a musical on Mean Girls, Paramount's president of global marketing and distribution, Mark Weinstock, said, We didn't want to run out and say it's a musical because people tend to treat musicals differently. This movie is a broad comedy with music. Yes, it could be considered a musical, but it appeals to a larger audience. You can see in the trailers for Wonka and The Colour Purple, they don't say they're musical either. We have a musical note on the title, so there are hints to it without being overbearing. I feel like this encompasses the entire problem. The issue is not in marketing, it's before the movie even gets made. Making a film which aims to appeal to as wide an audience as possible is a great way of abolishing creativity. Musicals which have flourished in the past and continue to receive love today do so because of how unapologetically a musical they are. 
People are disinterested in musicals perhaps because they are getting tricked into watching mediocre musicals. It's all cyclical. If studios are producing subpar musicals, no wonder people have no interest in musicals. Studios, good luck marketing Wicked. I'd love to know what your opinions on movie musicals are and if you agree with what I said in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, and for more movie opinions, follow me on Insta. And before you go, don't forget to let me know what you found in the frames.